silence your cell phones and other electronic devices. There was an executive session at 6.30 prior to this meeting to discuss a student matter. Uh, Mrs. Collins, I'd like to just let you know that all board members are present. And I would just publicly like to welcome uh, Sylvan Hershey, our newest board member. He was sworn in uh, last Friday uh, here in the administration building, so he took his seat tonight. And so we now have a full uh, nine-member board. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to welcome all of our guests tonight. Thank you for coming out to the board meeting. <clears throat> First thing on the agenda is to accept the minutes of the January 7th and the January 22nd board directors meeting. Are there any uh, corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made? All right, hearing none, I entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Eight minutes have been approved. Any notices and communications? From any board members? Okay. All right, we now have citizens participation. We have four speakers tonight. The first three are going to, are here to talk about, address the board about lacrosse. The first person is Kate Rush, Russwall. Good evening, Kate. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Hello, my name is Kate and I am in second grade. I play lacrosse in New Oxford, but I live in Gettysburg. I would like to play lacrosse in Gettysburg for my schools when I am older. I think it is lots of fun. One reason is because it gives people lots of exercise like practicing for games and running around to get our legs warmed up. Another reason is it is really fun, is fun to practice at home. Please add the cross to Gettysburg Schools. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Uh, next, speaking of, again about the cross, Melissa Stiff. Did I get that right? Yep, that's correct. Okay. Good evening. So uh, my husband and I are here tonight. We're, we have three kids in Gettysburg Area School District, two high school students and one soon to be middle schooler. We're extremely happy with the education our kids get here in Gettysburg. Wonderful, wonderful place to live, wonderful place for our kids to go to school. Um, we would like to respectfully request that the board investigate adding lacrosse. In our household, all three kids have shown an interest. As far as structure for a team and teams to play, it appears at least 40% of schools in PIAA District 3 already have lacrosse teams based on our review of the PIA website. <clears throat> in terms of developing a pipeline of younger kids to play, GMF, Gettysburg Midget Football, has already expressed an interest. So someone like Kate would have an opportunity to play closer to home. In terms of the community, we started a petition last Monday, and there are already 70 signatures requesting lacrosse to be added to the program. So again, we would just like to respectfully request that you consider adding it. Thank you. Thank you. Again on lacrosse, Jason Stitt. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'd just like to reiterate what uh, my wife said. Uh, we, our, our kids are getting a great education here. They have a tremendous uh, number of opportunities, both uh, educationally and uh, on extracurriculars. Uh, we, we do think there's always room for improvement. I think in the athletic department, um, having more choices, especially in spring sports, um, is something that should be considered. We know that uh, there are a lot of competing interests 
in the, the budget, so we know it, it may not work the first time. However, we'd like to, you know, for lacrosse to be considered part of the long-term plans for the athletic department. And if there's anything um, that the parents can do to help out to uh, get this added, you know, we're here to help. Let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. <coughs> Next to speak to the board is Elizabeth Barnham concerning Tender Care Project. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Barnham, and I wrote the letter to the editor in the January 22nd edition of the Gettysburg Times about the use of Tender Care's program titled Project Work in our local public schools. I wrote the letter because former students of the program shared concerns about tender care's messages. Because I have concerns about project work materials I have seen. Because other parents felt that their complaints about the program had not been addressed. Over a week ago, I made the written request for your published policy to review the middle school sex ed curriculum including all of the project work materials. I am currently waiting for the date and location for this review. I look forward to completing this process and reporting my findings. Thank you. Thank you. Our next board committee report. in January 24th, and Andrew Robinson, our communications coordinator, did a terrific job in updating all of the board and provided a report on the outcome of that meeting. So I'm not going to repeat what you've already read in the email, but I will ask something of you instead. The next communications committee meeting will be April 24th. Uh, at this meeting, an agenda item will be selecting the committee meeting date for the next fiscal year. In light of this, I'd like to ask you to think about the necessity of a communications committee. A couple of things to note. The committee was originally formed to fill a void that was effectively filled when the district hired a full-time communications coordinator, Mr. Robinson, who, by the way, is doing an excellent job. Meeting agendas at this point are really an opportunity for the communications coordinator to share his updates. Uh, the same updates that he shared with the board in the Friday report. I'm going to request of our board president that we have an agenda item to review board committees holistically and adjust as we see fit moving forward. With having a professional communications coordinator, I feel we're in a very good position to have those conversations. That is my report. All right, thank you, Kathleen. Mr. President, the Finance Buildings and Grounds Committee will meet on the third Thursday of the month, which is February 22nd, 21st, excuse me. 21st. 21st. presenting the uh, framework of understanding poverty for all our new hires and we are also very busy planning for February 18th our President's Day full day professional development um, bringing a lot of different options to our teachers so they have choice in the sessions that they get to attend on that particular date so those are the things we're working on most at this time As I mentioned previously, April 17th, uh, we're working on our next uh, community forum, uh, parent forum, and topic, um, depression and anxiety. Um, we'll be working with uh, Dr. Peter Mockmany um, from State College, and uh, John Lewis and I will be having a planning meeting with him sometime over the next month or so. And then um, Andrew's been a lot of help kind of in, in working with those, trying to get the word out. So. Once the details are ironed out, um, we'll blast that out to our uh, uh, parent community, and um, much like we do with the social media, and hopefully folks that have an interest in um, hearing about it uh, can attend. Um, 
be uh, contacting Idet Drop this week to possibly get some May dates. Um, the last go around, there really wasn't a consistent date for all of us, so uh, I will uh, I will get back to you once I uh, once I'm able to do that. Um, Jane Collins is in the process of setting up uh, board visits to all of our schools. Um, we did that last year, and uh, it was really well received on both ends, both by board members and from the schools. They love having you all there, um, and uh, so we're looking at. Um, Probably starting in late February and going through about early May or so, we'll spread those out. And uh, so once we have those dates identified, we'll get those out. <coughs> um, we continue to work on the budget at this point. February is a month where uh, cabinet members are meeting with individual budget heads to look at their individual budgets and uh, conversations about those, and then we wrap those into further presentations for the board, um, probably late March, uh, late March, early April. And uh, didn't have to get up at four o'clock in the morning this morning to look at the weather. That was nice. Uh, hopefully I don't bother any parents this week at all. Uh, but uh, we never can tell. So um, I like seeing the 50 degrees and 40 degrees, it's nice. On to our regular uh, business agenda. On your number nine, personnel items 9.12, including 9.4. So moved. Second. Discussion. Just a quick question, um, and I probably should have asked this as we went through last year. Jason, um, when we have a resignation of a, a personnel in whatever whatever building, that determination on long-term stop or hiring. When, when, when's that made? I mean, is there a lapse there, or how's that? Well, how's that decision? If we look at those, you know, on an individual basis. It usually, is length of length of time is the biggest indicator. Um, what type of position it is, whether it's a bargaining unit position versus a non-bargaining unit position. Um, so there are lots of variables. Um, you know, we with certain positions, uh, it's easy to jump right into finding somebody full time. Uh, with other positions, it's better at times to find like a a full-time sub and then hit it when you get new graduates in May. Um, if you're looking for a physics teacher or something, something one of those hard to find certification areas, um, a lot of times it's better to wait and um, you know get your get your next set of graduates out. Yeah, I just thought it was unusual because we have the math teacher yeah. critically into the school year leaving, you know, in, 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 a, in a rather important time yeah. to, to have to step in and and keep keep treading water moving forward. So, mm -hmm. any other discussion? Yeah, I, I had asked Dr. Parenry relative to the uh, school psychologist intern, and I was just curious the types of duties that uh, they'll be doing for us. Uh, uh, <laughs> All duties that a, that a school psychologist would do, everything from evaluations to um, membership on data teams, um, the student assistance teams, uh, counseling. It's really kind of a, you know, it's a paid internship, really. So they work under the direction of the other psychologists. I know sometimes many uh, districts have trouble keeping up with the timeline to complete the request for testing uh, for whether it be gifted or learning support or whatever. Um, just curious about those kind of numbers at some point, but thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All right, hearing no more discussion, then we'll take the vote. Kathleen? Yes. Carrie. Yes. Mike. Yes. Alice. Yes. Kenny. Yes. Jim. Yes. Al. Yes. Sylvan. Yes. <coughs> and I vote yes. Next we have 12 policy, item 12.1, student expulsion. So moved. Second. Discussion questions for Dr. Perrin before we proceed. All right? Carrie? Yes. Mike? Yes. Alice? Yes. Ken? Yes. Jim? Yes. Al? Yes. Sylvan? Yes. Kathleen? Yes. And I vote yes. That takes care of all our business items for tonight. And the next is information items. Anything for the good of the order? 
tonight. Just a reminder that as soon as we adjourn, we are going to have our pictures taken for the website and the yearbook. So be ready for that. And our next board meeting is scheduled for February 19th, 20, uh, 2019 at 7 o'clock. Again, appreciate all those of you that came out tonight. Thank you. And we stand adjourned.